The double Olympian got to the last 16 in Rio, then the quarterfinals in Tokyo where she lost to eventual gold medalist Lauren Price, a world champion at welterweight back in 2014. In her semi-final, she beat Nadezda Riabets of Kazakhstan by unanimous decision. Ifra O'Rourke won every round against Anastasia Shamanova of Russia in her semi-final. Boxed in Tokyo, went out to Kian Lee early on. Lee went on to win silver, losing to the aforementioned Lauren Price in the final. <laughs> Kelly Harrington has won gold for Ireland already. Today O'Rourke will be busting to repeat that. Took up boxing quite late at 17, so has made a lot of strides in the seven or eight years since then. I think went down to the gym originally to keep up her fitness for, for Gaelic sports. It's very common that with boxers. They fancy the fitness that boxing gives. They're into other sports and then they go to the gym, they get bitten by the boxing bug and then that's it then once you're in this you're in it whether you're watching or whether you're fighting it's you get a taste for it you get addicted to it and there's no way out touch of gloves between the two so Bailon Panama in the red O'Rourke Island in the blue O'Rourke in that orthodox stance Bailon the taller of the two Southport, little dab jab there from Bylon. Looking to try and pump that lead hand. Right hand got through there from O'Rourke. Lead left hand, lead left hook as well from O'Rourke. Lands and good start for the fighter in blue. Bylon though, just looking to try and work that jab again. She needs that jab. O'Rourke with a little feint. Got into the middle distance there, was looking for a right hand to the body, couldn't quite land it. But you see her there just fainting with that front foot. She's trying to draw that jab and make her way past it. Steps onto the outside there and looks for that right. When you've got a southpaw against orthodox, you see it a lot in, in either boxing, much, much more than you do in pros. Then the coaching manual will tell you that they're competing for that space on the outside. You want your lead foot on the outside of your opponent's lead foot. And O'Rourke has done a good job of that so far. She's taken the outside pretty much every time she's looked to step in. She's stepping quite wide, actually, and looking to try and throw that right hand down the middle. It's a shoelace has come, come undone there. Almost halfway through this first round. Again with a faint stare, walk, walk, trying to draw that jab and then climbs into a, a lead left hook. Didn't really land that one. Combination to the body there from O'Rourke, but I think got caught by Bylon at that kind of middle range. Long left hand to the body there from the Panamanian. Jab just reached there for O'Rourke. Lead right hand got through from O'Rourke and then followed it straight onto the shoulder. She had to stretch for that one. The referee had given the instruction to stop boxing there. But that's not a bad policy from O'Rourke because when you've got to close that gap, you've got to really commit. And if you find that you're not quite going to make it, then if you just take it all the way onto the shoulder, it makes it difficult to counter. What you don't want to do is be stuck in some kind of middle ground. Bylon with a right hand and then just moves off to her right. O'Rourke gets up close. Looks to try and get those hands free. Put a lot into this opening round, the fighter in blue. 
again reaching for that right the weight comes forward long left there from Bailon closing seconds of round one she set a high pace there O'Rourke a touch of gloves between the two I would go blue corner that opening round a lot of aggression there from O'Rourke as I said she's committing to those attacks sometimes the weight's coming over the top of that front foot a bit the, the feet are crossing almost but she follows through on those attacks Bylon hasn't quite been able to just give herself the room she needs to to time her on the way in so four judges go the way of O'Rourke India goes 10-9 for Athena Bailon. There's that feint with the front foot. And that time she was a bit too close. But she's got that spidery kind of reach Bailon. Short right hand got through there for O'Rourke. So into the second, Bailon needs his second. She's got to make sure this is still live going into the third. Both just letting their hands go at mid-range there. And when you look at the dimensions of these two, you would say that that kind of situation would suit O'Rourke better, but Bylon's actually quite comfortable just digging her toes in and finding that little bit of space. Quite often for tall fighters, they don't utilise that height and reach as much as they might, and Bailon is an example of that. She doesn't really have a stiff, strong jab or, or one-two. She doesn't necessarily keep it on the outside. The referee just having a chat with Bailon about holding there. A minute into... The second round, she was short there, O'Rourke, with that attack as she came forward. Maybe just got clipped with a right hand there from Bailon. Right hand to the body, and she moved forward there, though she did give herself a touch of space there, Bailon. I think just managed to land a short left uppercut. O'Rourke again in this round, though, the one making the running, the one coming forward. Slightly wearier look about her, though. As I said, she put a lot into that opening round. The tempo was high. Right to the body, but just got caught on the way out there, O'Rourke. Bailon has got to up it, second half of this round. Just over a minute remaining. She's got to put her foot down and, and start punching more, because I do think that she's beginning to feel this a bit, Efro O'Rourke, and Athena Bailon needs this second round. O'Rourke, as I say that, though, just comes forward, lines up that right. Bailon just standing off. O'Rourke steps in, looks for a long right uppercut. She's dug deep and gone again at the end of the second round here. O'Rourke, right hand to the body. Then gets up close, finds good distance there. A couple of right hands get through. Bailon just trying to cover up. And it's a standing count. Standing count against Athena Bailon. Uh, just as I was saying that, that Bailon needed to, to step on the gas herself because there were signs maybe I felt that O'Rourke was just feeling the pace that she'd set. It's O'Rourke actually who... I think has put a foot down and taken that second round away from her opponent. Four one split in the scoring at the end of round one. And O'Rourke gets it across the board there, so a two point advantage with four out of the five 
judges, which leaves Bailon with a lot to do to turn this around in the third and final round. So third and final round, Athena Bailon of Panama in the red has got to come out all guns blazing here this final three minutes. She needs 10-8 and that may well suit Ifro O'Rourke of Ireland in the blue. Bailon opening out early stages of the round and these two just trading. And it's O'Rourke I think who's going to get the better of that type of fight. Lead right hand there, O'Rourke. Didn't quite land it. Got caught by a couple on the way in there. The fighter in blue. Bailon stepping off and finding a right to the body there as well. And she's looking better in this final round, Bailon, basically because she's throwing more. O'Rourke dictated terms in the opening two rounds. And she's still the one of the two here coming forward. Really looking to press it. Lands a good one too there. The right hand just clattering into the side of Bailon's head. But Bailon in the opening minute was more aggressive. And that's a good body attack, but the referee had said stop boxing. As I said, at that middle kind of distance when she just sets her feet, digs those toes in, she can get some really good leverage on her punches. Right hand there from O'Rourke. Goes straight down the middle. Slightly weary looking left hand there from Bailon into the final minute. She's having the best round of the fight here, Bailon. I wouldn't necessarily say it's enough to win the round because O'Rourke's landed plenty of good shots in this in this third and final round. And really, she's dominated this fight due to the fact that she's outworked Bailon right from the very beginning. Good right hand there from O'Rourke. Lead right hand again, and then just follows that straight in. And another right hand on the inside, and a left hook. Final few seconds, she's finishing strong here. This is going to be a second gold medal of the day for Ireland. Ephra Rourke will follow Kelly Harrington into the record books as a gold medalist at the 2022 Stranger Memorial Tournament. Unanimous decision win there for O'Rourke, so all of the judges going her way. She was in control heading into that third and final round. She gets that third round across the board. So four scores of 30 points to 27, which was what I got. 29-28 there with the Indian judge, second from top. And as I was saying, a dominant display. So just one more fight remaining now, and that will come in the women's heavyweight division, 81 kilos plus. Dulma Lumbanova of Russia and Lazat 
Kungabayeva of Kazakhstan, who won gold at the Asia Championships last May, saw her there in that competition. Got past Nandini of India by unanimous decision in her semi-final. Lumbanova beat Kristina Tukacheva, also of Russia, also 5-0. Goodbye, Ava, also a former world champion.